Hi everyone, welcome to the Mama Elephant June release. This is Rena. Remember to leave a comment on these release videos for a chance to enter a drawing to win a prize from Mama Elephant. This release will be available on June 15th. Today we have a fun fall themed stamp set, Hey Pumpkin. I am loving this transition into fall themed stamp sets and Hey Pumpkin has a bunch of pumpkins with different critters. My favorite one is the kitty one. I think the kitty is so, so adorable. The sentiments on this stamp set are Hey Pumpkin, it's pumpkin season and wishing you pumpkin spice and everything nice. Here are the coordinating dies for Hey Pumpkin. And here is a new creative cut set. This is B2B, which is back to basic squares. And that will cut out um, a bunch of squares that you can nest together if you like. Today I'll be coloring in the images using the Arteza Real Brush Markers. And these are similar to the Zig Real Clean Color Brush Markers. And it's just an easy, cheater way to watercolor. I stamped it out using the Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink in Chocolate Truffle, and I did use Bristol Smooth Cardstock for my paper. For a while there, I was kind of avoiding using <laughs> these pens to color because I wasn't having much luck, and I had forgotten that I really like using a watercolor pen to drag out the color on Bristol Smooth cardstock. I had bought all of these brushes trying to find the perfect brush to use um, with these markers and um, it just slipped my mind that I really liked using the watercolor pen to um, use um, with the markers. And so with the Bristol Smooth cardstock, it's a really slippery, um, paper. It has kind of like a coating on it. So you can just write on the paper directly with, you know, whatever color that you want. And then you can drag it out with the uh, watercolor pen. I don't like to use water um, because you don't, I don't need to. Um, and it just drags out really nice just with the pen. And I just like the stiffness of the, the bristles of the pen. And it worked really well. And I'm like, I, how did I forget that I like using this pen? So I had a really fun time coloring um, with these markers finally, because I don't think I've used watercolor for a long time. And I really like the look of it. and. It's easier than Copics in that you don't have to find colors to blend. Um, at least I don't. I, I think one marker is enough and you can achieve um, the shading and the gradation just by um, dragging out the pigment and it's lighter in some areas and it's darker in some areas and you don't have to find two or three markers to achieve that um, shading. So when you're using these watercolor brush pens, I found that um, you don't want to overwork the paper because Bristol Smooth cardstock is, you know, really thin. It's not like watercolor paper to where it can handle a lot of water. So if you want to layer colors, you want to wait until that initial um, coloring is dry and then you can add on top of it after it's dry. I just get better results when I let it dry in between and I like to keep a little fan next to me and just dry it that way um, instead of using a heat gun and it works out really well. I wasn't having much luck with this certain marker and this always happens to me. I color something and it doesn't turn out the way I want and more often than not, the reason is because the pen or whatever marker I'm using is all dried out. So sometimes like the coloring doesn't look good if you, you know, touch your paper and you get like oils from your fingers on it, like it, the color won't lay down nicely. So I try not to touch um, my paper too much so that doesn't happen. But this peach marker that I'm using, it was not working and I totally messed up that little fox and, um, at the bottom and I was like what is happening and then I ended up looking at the marker and it was on its way to being totally dry so that's why I wasn't having luck with that 
So this fox was totally killing me. Here is the culprit, that dry marker, and it wasn't blending. And I'm like, what is happening? Um, did I touch the paper? It's not going the way that I want. And um, in person, this looked crazy. So I'm like, okay, I'll use another color. I'll, I'll use brown. And then it got all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I was determined not to restamp this. So I kept going. And it's so funny what you do, like what I do when I color something wrong and I'm trying to save it. Like I do all these crazy things. Like I was blowing on it. Why? Um, <laughs> and I was like patting it with a towel. I was trying to make it like look at least a little bit even. But I kept working at it. And um I somehow got it to a point where like, okay, I'm okay with this. So that fox gave me a lot of trouble. I just really loved using fall colors. Um, I'm coloring the pumpkins like an orange. And then I, I thought I picked two different oranges, but they ended up looking very similar to each other. And then yellow, and I forgot to do a green pumpkin, um, but that's okay. So I did two different colors and I just loved how it turned out. Um, so now um, the stamp set also comes with these little faces that you can choose to use or not and I thought they were so cute that I had to stamp them out just to see what they look like and look how precious Here are the images after I cut them out using the coordinating dies that's like my favorite part here's a look at B2B squares they're just uh, squared nesting dies I decided to use the largest size uh, which is four and a quarter square and the next size down um, just so I could make a square card and this will fit in a regular envelope because it's four and a quarter um, just so I could have um, the card front with a little bit of a border around it. I'm going to do some quick ink blending and I accidentally had a heavy hand but I'm just going to work with what I did. I used Distress Oxide ink in Abandon Coral and a Mustard Seed. The Mustard Seed was a bit brighter than I had remembered um, it to be so I added a little bit of um, spiced marmalade just to tone it down a tiny bit. So I'll be making two cards today and I'm just selecting two of the sentiments to stamp on the card panels. Sometimes I, I always forget this part and I always end up stamping on a finished card, which is very nerve wracking <laughs> if you make a mistake, but I remember this time to do it before I put the card together. I'm just, um, just centering it at the top. It'll be a really uh, simple card. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension, so I am uh, using foam adhesive to adhere the card panel and um, just to give it a little bit of lift and interest. And then I will be adhering um, the images on. I loved these colors. These are, I love like citrus colors. And I do have the new Tim Holtz um, saltwater taffy, and it is a gorgeous color. I feel like Tim made it just for me, but he didn't. But I just love it, and I cannot find it. <laughs> so that's why I ended up using Abandoned Coral. So I'm taking the images that we just colored and I'm adhering them to the card. Some of them I'm adhering directly um, if they're gonna be behind something and if they're in front of something, I'm putting double-sided foam adhesive. I thought we needed a little bit more on these, so I'm adhering on some of the little tiny images that come with the stamp set, and I like that the little images come with coordinating dies, so it looks really nice. So I'm adding the different leaves and the little pumpkin there to that card. And then I thought that we needed something more. So I'm just adding some white gel pen detail to both cards. And that is it. I'll be adhering these two card bases off camera. And here's a look at the final cards. I loved how they turned out. It was so fun um, doing fall cards this time around. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an awesome day. Stay safe, happy crafting, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.